traveled to a local yacht club to use the Artec 3D Leo to scan the Air Marine travel lift. The Leo is excellent because it's a portable scanner. You can see that there's no laptop required. This allows easy movement around objects, underneath areas, and in confined spaces. I'm looking at the back of the Leo while scanning to visualize what's being captured. The screen on the back shows both the range of the objects being captured as well as the data density or data quality of what you're capturing. We're back at the office now and it's time to post-process our scan data that we've captured with the Artec Leo and create a single mesh file from which we can begin our reverse engineering. We're looking at the Traveler data now. It's been imported using the micro SD card on the bottom of the Leo. The first thing that we can do is delete any extraneous data that we're not interested in. In this case, I'm going to keep all the data that we have. Next, we're going to do something called global registration. The global registration program takes all of the scan data and reviews it against nearby data to make sure that there's no redundant data. Let's run that now. The global registration is now complete. For the seven gigabytes of scan data that we have, the global registration took approximately six minutes. We can, at this point, run a noise reduction algorithm called outlier removal, but in reviewing the data, it's actually quite clean already, so there's no need to proceed with that step. Next in the line is the sharp fusion algorithm that will take all of the scan frames and generate a mesh file from it. For sharp fusion, we can adjust the resolution to whatever suits our needs. I'm going to use a one millimeter resolution for this project. We can allow the sharp fusion algorithm to fill holes, either to generate a completely watertight mesh or based on a certain radius. I'm going to allow, allow the fusion to fill holes up to three millimeters in radius. This will give us a good balance of a nice clean mesh without creating too much artificial geometry. We'll run that now. After eight minutes, the sharp fusion has completed and we're left with one tessellated model um, that's been calculated from all of the individual scans here. I've unloaded the scans from RAM just to save a little bit of space and we can begin reviewing the actual data. Looks pretty good. We're left uh, with good representations of the hydraulic lines. All the plates are showing up well. There's a couple of holes, but nothing that's gonna stop us from from fulfilling our reverse engineering work that we need to do. The next thing that we can do to make this a little bit easier uh, to import into SolidWorks is run a mesh simplification. We're gonna do that using the shape deviation method and choosing a tolerance that we're comfortable with for our reverse engineering. I'm gonna use 0.1 millimeters. It's gonna bring down our file size significantly but won't affect the overall geometry too much. Let's start that now. Now that the mesh simplification is finished, the last thing we'd like to do before moving into SOLIDWORKS is move this mesh to a more useful coordinate system. We'll do that by first constructing some planes on the actual mesh data. We'll use this area here to define one plane, and we'll grab the front of the travel lift to define another. Excellent. Finally, we'll go into the precise positioning editing tool and we'll align those planes with the origins. Great. We'll now save this as an STL file and export it in SOLIDWORKS.